On today's video, we are going to talk about a very common problem and an issue that so many people have. It is predicted that one out of two people have insulin resistance here in the United States and they don't even know it. On today's video, I want to tell you about insulin resistance. What is insulin resistance? How do we diagnose insulin resistance and how you can prevent insulin resistance? So once again, welcome back to the one and only YouTube channel, The Voice of Diabetes, that's helping you beat your diabetes together. This is your host, Diana Butucci. If you are new, consider subscribing and please like this video, share this video with others as well that you think can benefit. So let's dive right into insulin resistance. And of course, as always, I am going to simplify the information. Insulin resistance is a complex condition in which your body does not respond well to its own insulin. We know that insulin is a hormone that is produced by your pancreas, and it's actually essential for regulating blood sugar levels in our body. Without insulin, we can't regulate our blood sugar levels and it can lead to higher blood sugar levels. I just wanna spend a little bit of time talking about the importance of insulin. It breaks down the food you eat into glucose, which is sugar, and that is the main source of energy that our body needs. So the insulin is like a key, and it really helps convert the food into sugar, which we can later use for energy. Once we eat, our, our pancreas gets an alert to say, hey, we need some insulin on board so we can take this glucose to, to where it needs to go. So really the pancreas is all signaled by glucose. Do we need more insulin on board or do we need less? So let's just say we're not eating or we're in a fasting period, which is usually during the night when we're sleeping. Our pancreas is not producing a lot of insulin because we don't need it. And at times where we are eating, of course, the pancreas wakes up and says, oh, this person just ate. Let me make some more insulin so we can take the glucose, the food, and we can use it for energy, which is exactly what we want to do. When this is not happening appropriately or when our body is not responding to the insulin our body is producing, we call that insulin resistance meaning you're producing insulin, but you're just not using it correctly. The body senses that the sugar levels are higher, and of course the pancreas says, okay, I need to produce more insulin. So although we're producing insulin, we're not using it effectively with insulin resistance. So as a result, we're, the pancreas is on overdrive. It tries to keep up with the demand and is just producing more and more insulin. Let's just say you normally would require 10 units of insulin for the pancreas to make if you are not insulin resistant. If you are insulin resistant, now you might require 20 units to do the same job that 10 units would have done in the past. So that's the problem, is just that we're making enough insulin, we're just not using it appropriately. We can burn out the pancreas and you might not make enough insulin at all. As a result, that's when we see the blood sugar levels start to spike. We see blood sugar levels increase, which can lead to prediabetes and subsequently can lead to diabetes, which is actually the chain of events that happen usually with type two diabetes. Patients will be insulin resistant for a long time before they even know they have an issue with resistance, and then they will develop prediabetes, and they won't even know one out of three people right now in the United States have prediabetes, which is about 84 plus million people have it, and they don't even know they have it. So what's the big deal with insulin resistance? Why is it important? Well, we know that when we are overproducing too much insulin and when we're not able to utilize that insulin appropriately, it can lead to a lot of issues. Obesity is one of them, cardiovascular disease. Unfortunately, heart disease is still the leading cause of death in the United States today. It can lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, metabolic syndrome, and of course, polycystic ovary syndrome, which would be PCOS. It's very difficult to diagnose insulin resistance because there's usually not a lot of symptoms. Most people will gain weight. They're not really sure why they're gaining weight. They think it's attributed to, you know, they're getting older, their metabolism is slowing down. Not a lot of people will know that they have insulin resistance, things that you can, you can watch out for, which would be increased thirst, frequency urinating, if you're hungry all the time and you're not really sure, it's not making sense on why you're always eating, blurred vision, if you're having headaches, 
if you're having vaginal or skin infections, that's also a red flag. Or if you're having issues with healing and open sores, you're getting a cut, but it's taking a lot longer for things to heal. Those are red flags that you probably want to see your provider. Physical inactivity, obesity being such high risk factors for developing insulin resistance. But diet is obviously which kind of goes hand in hand with obesity uh, because Poor diets can often lead to more caloric intake, which can lead to overweight and obesity. Diet that is highly processed, high carbohydrate foods, and foods that are saturated fats are linked to insulin resistance. We know that our body digests highly processed, highly carbohydrate foods very quickly, which causes the blood sugar levels to spike. This puts extra stress on your pancreas to produce a lot of insulin, which over time can lead to insulin resistance. And certain medications, I know I talked about steroids, but actually some blood pressure medications and certain HIV treatments and some psychiatric medications can also lead to insulin resistance. So we just want to be careful and we want to always make sure that we know the side effects of what we're taking into our bodies, which is why I create these videos so I can make everyone aware of why they're taking something and things that they can watch out for because with more knowledge, comes with more power and the ability for us to make the right changes. So that is really the drive of these videos, which I hope you guys are learning. How do I diagnose insulin resistance? What I will do is I'll do a fasting blood sugar levels. I'll have the patient fast starting midnight and I'll have them go in for blood work early in the morning and they don't eat or drink anything and I test their, their fasting plasma glucose level to see if that's elevated. A lot of time patients who struggle with insulin resistance will have elevated fasting glucose which we call impaired fasting glucose. And then I will check their lipid panel as well, particularly paying attention to triglycerides. And a lot of times I will do a hemoglobin A1C, which is an average blood sugar for the past three months. And if it's elevated or borderline, then I can kind of tell the patient, hey, you know, I think we're struggling with some insulin resistance here. How do I treat insulin resistance? So if you are someone that's at home and you know that, you know, you may kind, you kind of fit the criteria and you think that you may be struggling with insulin resistance, Eating a healthy diet is going to be crucial. Normally, I recommend or I will refer patients to a nutritionist, but a lot of times I do my own education in the office. I will tell patients to limit their carbohydrate, especially like refined sugar, cutting down on unhealthy fats, sugar, cutting down on red meats and processed starches, obviously candies, sweets, cakes, baked goods, breads, all of those are usually not great. I recommend a diet that is higher in whole foods that will include more vegetables, more uh, lean protein, and of course, um, healthy fruits. Getting regular amounts of moderate intensity physical activity, it helps increase glucose energy usage and improves muscle insulin sensitivity. So we know that just you know going for a 20, 30 minute brisk walking is huge. Anything that you enjoy, I don't care what kind of exercise it is. We just want to make sure that the heart is racing and that can include walking, jogging, bicycling, whatever you enjoy doing, doing that can actually increase glucose uptake by 40%. So that is unbelievable that you're actually using 40% more glucose that's in your bloodstream. You're taking it inside the cell and you're using it for energy so it's not roaming around. And of course, it also improves sensitivity so we can use that insulin more appropriately. Losing weight can be huge help. So just losing 10 pounds or so can actually reduce your chance of getting diabetes by over 50%, which is absolutely just amazing something that we can all do it's not very difficult to achieve you just have to set your mind to it and you got to do it guys we got to cut back portion control stay more active and those are the things that we should all be doing regardless um, obviously we feel better about ourselves but we also really cut down and eliminate a lot of um, chances of us getting some of these illnesses including insulin resistance there are medications that we can use metformin we can use to reduce insulin resistance because 
that's metformin really works on improving insulin sensitivity. I do have a video on metformin. You guys can check that out. Um, but sometimes we can use blood pressure medications if patients are struggling with blood pressure. And we can use certain stat statins like Crestor, Lipitor to bring down or lower cholesterol levels. But normally I always say the best and the number one medication that is the most underutilized medication worldwide is exercise and diet and we all need to start there before we explore these options but they are they are things that i do use when patients are unable to achieve their target weight and of course when we notice that things are climbing up and we're not happy about that we need to put a stop before we develop other complications insulin resistance is absolutely reversible if you take action quickly and if you lose the weight if you improve your diet and you just increase your activity i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please share it consider giving this video a thumbs up and i will see you all on the next video